that was my story. I got a hunger to find out what the hell was blocking me from living my life peacefully. Mm. And that was an awakening which I was not expecting at all, I can tell you. But I, this is what I'm trying to, the deepest part of me emerged. And that was the urge then that got me to ask questions about my own history. What the hell? But the deepest part of you emerged, right? Yeah. Now, see, we're on the verge of biblical language here again now. And yeah. it all sounds very kind of floaty and all that, right? Did, how did that manifest itself? Did it come out in an anger? Did it come out with a rage? Did it come out with a hurt? Did it come out with a pain? I mean, put it in some terms that you hear in Tesco. Yeah. Not <laughs> this floaty biblical yeah. language. Yeah. You're not Moses. You're wearing a lovely jacket and you yeah. don't have a beard. So, how would you put it? Well, I'd better dress than him anyway. <laughs> 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 he was all wrecked. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's good to visit the desert, but I wouldn't live there. Yeah, you know? okay. Um, so, you know, you said the deepest part of you emerged. Yeah. the hell do you mean by that? Well, I have a good story. Oh, good. Okay, and I, was, I organised a meditation week in, uh, in the west of Ireland outside Cleggan. And they were Where their lives are filled with apologies. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And on this a particular day, I I was out walking by the sea. Yeah. And there were about 12, 14 people in the area meditating. And when I came back to the late, later in the day, uh, a very expensive towel that I had bought in Dublin around that time. I mean, a French towel, it was very expensive, I can tell you. French and towel, listeners. <laughs> yeah. French towel. Yeah. Well, it was, a, it was a gift I bought for myself. Oh, well, that's a lovely. Yeah. I think I'll make a note of that and buy a gift for myself. Right? It's lovely, it's a kind of bought for myself. All right, okay, I'm listening. Yeah. And when I, there was several people living in, the, in this particular house, maybe five or six people. Yeah. And when I went looking for my towel, yeah. I couldn't find it. And <laughs> you told them when you you What? Sorry, I'm anticipating the story, yeah. sorry. So I couldn't find this expensive towel. And I was raging, I was full of anger. Somebody stole my expensive French So you towel. did go, you bastards, you wanted to yeah. stole it. You yeah. did, right, okay. And I was going around the place asking people, Did you have you seen my this towel it's and French. Yeah. yeah. You were still looking fucker. Oh, right? sorry, I'm, I'm okay, I'll show So you. I was going around asking everybody, did I see my towel, okay? And uh, after a while, going around in my anger, I began to think about it in my anger, what was it all going on? And I'd left my, I had been given a very expensive leather jacket. Of course you had to. Yeah. Of course you had to. It was a French. It cost, uh, it was a gift from a special friend. Okay. The, there was my friend in the, this house with the door open all day and with money inside of us. Yeah. For the, a couple of hundred quid to pay for the week. And there was my, my expensive leather jacket, a couple of hundred quid inside in the pocket of it. Mm. And whoever stole my towel. Hadn't touched the no, jacket. Yeah. And I began to. And this doesn't make any sense. No, this is no a kind sense of, to me, yeah. Yeah. And that was. I said to myself, so like, wait a minute. Yeah. This is not my making. anger, yeah. Right. But I still wasn't kind of <laughs> still suspicious. I was still suspicious, yeah. Right. Who in the name of God stole my towel? And left me beautiful leather jacket yeah. that had money in it. Yeah. And yeah. I had a clue there that my, my reaction of anger was out of proportion to the to the to what was going on. My anger, because I said to myself, Jesus, you know, if they're really serious about stealing, they wouldn't go for a bloody French towel. <laughs> <laughs> They'd go for my leather jacket, uh, the money. Well, yeah, so, so, so just get the money, cut yeah. to the chase. Yeah. So I yeah. said, uh, that was the clue. It was an out of proportion reaction. And it was a big reaction. Oh, yeah. So it's like, it, you know, it's like going over a roundabout instead of a roundabout. Like you, yeah. It's like hitting a wall. It's, 
big reaction. Yeah. So you can't ignore it. So this was the clue then, a disproportionate reaction. In modern psychology, it's, uh, what's the word, it's obsessive compulsive disorder. Oh, juicy. It's nice. A, it's a load of bollocks. <laughs> 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 they do all these focus and he just been doing psychology degrees and saying to right. go. So they're throwing these words yeah. around like frisbees. Uh, you go yeah. to you go to St. Patrick's hosp mental hospital, they dump drugs on top of you and yeah. you're you're labelled obsessive compulsive disorder. Yeah. There. And you're hooked then into the bloody drugs. Yeah. No attempt is made as far as I know to begin to understand. It's not a disorder, it's a reaction. So what you what okay. you it's a reaction. Yeah. And so I had a clue to begin to understand where was my reaction coming from? When did it begin? When did I... I began to trace the history of this kind of a re anger reaction. Eventually, I did discover the beginning of this anger. Now, I don't want to deal with it now. Yeah. Because I'd get myself into deep tr shit trouble. Yeah. I'd have to reveal some personal inf personal information. But ultimately you found this source I did. of this anger. Yes. That wasn't about a French tell. No. I tell you why I tell you why yeah. when I get back to Dublin the fucking tower was <laughs> <laughs> And you had you had come up with a conspiracy theory for yes. each one of those. Yeah. French tell thieving bastards. Yeah. And none of them stole your tail. Not only a TV ambassador, a TV meditating bastard. <laughs> <laughs> the worst kind of bastard there is. Yeah, yeah. French <laughs> tail stealing meditating bastards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My God, wasn't it? Oh man. <laughs> so that began a big understanding in myself. Of my, re I began to look at other reactions in my in my day. Okay? Yeah. And I kept at it, and I began to discover more and more of my reactions. So therefore, you became you, you started developing an ear, yes, an emotional it. ear to these reactions. Yes. So any time there might have been a blow up or a reaction of yes. some kind, you go, oh, hang on, yeah, that's gone, yeah, that's slightly bigger yeah. reaction than it should be. Then you would actually, as I said, you'd go and find us, you'd listen to us, you'd accept us, yeah. And you'd hear what it has to say. Yes, yeah. And give it a hug. Yeah. But it taught me it it taught me more about myself as well, about my other reactions, to, to look at them. Where do they begin? Where do they come from? Okay. I could give a whole litany of obsessive compulsive disorders. The more the better. Because that's just a lovely way of finding out. Yes, yeah, wonderful. These are little flags, you might say, yeah, yeah. that mark the journey yeah. inwards. Yeah. I had a row, not a row with Michael O'Leary, you know, he came into the shop to buy, <coughs> to buy a chandelier. Like, right. He, want, he pointed the chandelier out, he said, uh, is, that, is that crystal? And I said to him, you better sit down. Sit down there. He said, I haven't got time. You know, I'm, I'm a busy man. But I said, if you're not going to sit down, and let me explain crystal to you, I'm not selling the fucking chandelier to you. So he took time. I said, anyway, to begin with, I said, if there was a crystal chandelier, you wouldn't be able to afford it. <laughs> I didn't know the guy. <laughs> but this truth God. And uh, he, he paid me the check and all there on the occasion, and he disoffed, and I never thought of looking at the check or anything, you know. Yeah. Just put it in my pocket, and half an hour later, Looking across the road, the window, who was walking across but Michael O'Leary? I said, Oh, Jesus, you know. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> I, I think that. I know that guy. Yeah. Wow. He's a great guy, actually. I admired him that day. He probably won't remember uh, yeah. what I'm telling you, okay. But, well, it, but then, it sounds like. It's, it's, I'm talking about my anger. Yeah. You know, I was. My I could, I could discover the anger in my voice, and I was. You know, I was going to t teach this for a lesson. You know, I was showing off the diff. I knew the difference between crystal and cut glass. Yeah. Well, you know, I was going to prove it. Don't you tell me. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, that, that's these things begin to fall into place because the energy of the deepest part of you is to discover the meaning of yourself. 
there's no the question began what is the meaning of life yeah it's a bollocks of a question it's too, it's too big you're bloody right it's not a question of the meaning of life no it's the meaning of your own life that's all you can deal with not the meaning of life it's you don't know the meaning of yourself from your own history then forget about the other one one it begins with yourself then you begin to understand of some sense of your place in life, in the, in the creation. You begin eventually to feel as happy and as beautiful as the stars in the sky. To begin to see the sky as a friend. The beauty of the sky, I can say that the sky is beautiful only because I have the capacity to discover the beauty within me. The, the sky said to me, the stars said to me, John, you too are beautiful like us. You begin to feel at one with nature, with yourself, with your neighbours, not always. I make lots of mistakes, get lots of trouble, you know. But you begin to have that sense of yourself, of nature teaches you. It's the unity of existence. Mm -hmm. There is a, my favourite topic is, there is no distinction between the spiritual and the material. None. Now what do you mean by that? The, what I mean by you that? You said earlier, you made it simple for me and call it the body. Was yes. it? That it's like, if you don't feel as in the body, it's not spiritual. Yeah. Is that what you mean by yes. the material and the spiritual? Yes. So if you don't feel it in the body, it's not spiritual. Well, you don't see it there either. You won't see it yeah. in the sky, at the moon, and the stars. Yeah, so it has to be, yeah. like you, you can't separate from the body. No. I mean, to me, I was saying earlier that spirituality seems to be something, to me, other or separate, or the divine part, if you like, mm -hmm. to use Catholic language, of being human. Whereas you're saying, you, you don't separate them, and they're actually very much all the same thing, that, yeah. you know, the body is also, it's, you, if you don't feel it in the body, it's not spiritual. So, yeah. to me, I always had those things in my head as being utterly separate. Yeah. Um, but it sounds like the, the connectivity that you have within yourself it begins opens with, you. It begins with yourself, discovering the meaning of your own life. Then you begin to see the meaning around you other things fall into place and eventually with meditation you keep at it you can look back over all of your life every detail even in the moment itself you begin to discover the meaning of your life it comes from inside you it's an inside job not outside